Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So we'll be starting the webinar uh, at 11 a.m. sharp. Hey, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the new payload from the DJI Enterprise. My name is Shafiq Arif, and I'll be focusing on the all information that the product able to provide us. While Mrs. Aisha, uh, who is our AUNIC GIS lead, are focusing on sharing to you all our local case study by using the product. We are also thrilled to have an audience from multiple industries, whether you're joining us from uh, office or anywhere. We appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. So today, we have an exciting agenda lineup featuring the Zenmuse H30 series. Our goal is to overview its specification, features, and capabilities. Without further ado, uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so Zenmuse H30 series are the next generation of its predecessor, the Zenmuse H20 series. The H30 series provide two variants, which are H30 and H30T. Our agenda today will be covering the product overview, its features, the product comparison, and lastly, the application scenarios. Looking at the similarity of the two variants, both uh, H30 and H30T provide zoom camera, wide camera angle, NIR auxiliary light, laser rangefinder. On the other hand, on the H30T variant are providing an additional sensor, which is thermal camera. With this, we will go through it one by one. So here is the uh, zoom camera. Looking at the zoom camera, both variants have the same specification, 
which is 40 megapixels with one over 1.8 inch CMOS sensor. So with this spec specification, it can cover a 34 times optical zoom and covering up to 400 times digital zoom. Now looking at the white camera, when referring to the white camera, both provide a 48 megapixels with one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor, providing a wider ranges of view. And then in terms of the laser rangefinder, it can cover up to three kilometer measuring range where it can provide an additional information towards the subject that you, that you are trying to focus on. So this is referring to uh, HTT. So when it comes to infrared thermal camera, only these variant are providing an additional sensor with a uh, thermal camera. It has higher resolution compared to its predecessor, the H20T. And then uh, during the nighttime operation, both variant H30 series also able to provide a higher clarity and more information gained on the subject uh, compared to uh, its predecessor, the H20N. Now, after looking at the product overview, we will then be focusing on its features so without further ado, let's explore it together, the HTT series features. So from the video, uh, it is trying to focus on a animal or a wildlife in the middle of the forest. So with these uh, features, with a higher zoom capability covering up to 400 times digital zoom, you can observe the subject at a greater distance and still able to capture more details with, without disturbing them. And then the HTT series also have the capability to minimize the shake when trying to focus on a small or even a very long distance subject when zooming in. So it means that it is able to stabilize the footage that you are trying to focus on. And then looking at the laser range finder. So with three kilometers maximum measuring range using laser range finder, it still has the capability of measuring the distance accurately. So this shows that HTT series measuring range are 2.5 times greater than the previous generation, the H20. Okay, so not only that, a HTT series have the capability to switch into night scene mode. So looking at the video, we can see side by side interface. Okay, and then when under the low light conditions, so it this enhances the live view and recording quality during the low light condition. So when we try to turn on the night scene mode, it also supports a black and white night vision with an IR illumination, uh, which assists the zoom camera to provide uh, more detail and clarity on the subject. This can be very beneficial for nighttime surveillance and also search and rescue operation. Moving on. Uh, in terms of infrared, when discovering the thermal sensor, it can provide a four times greater thermal zooming capability compared to its predecessor, the H20T. 
So this means that it allows us to overview the entire scene and yet still have the ability to zoom in on a specific area or even a subject. Okay. So the HTTT supports three infrared gain modes, which are high gain mode, uh, low gain mode, and high resolution mode. So all these three providing different purposes. High gain mode are for more precise temperature measurement, while looking at the low gain mode are for wider temperature measurement. And lastly, the high resolution mode, uh, it is suitable for observing object, people or animals with small temperature differences. And then, uh, in terms of side by side view with uh, both different camera, thermal camera and also the zoom camera. So when using a thermal uh, sensor, you can choose to have a link zoom. So this means that it provides a capability to view and zoom from the RGB camera, which is zoom camera and infrared camera at the same time with side by side view from the controller. So with this, it can provide you more information on the subject during the flight. So in terms of smarter multi scenario operation, HTT series also provide a better image quality by trying to balancing the light and dark area of the image. So not only that, it also have the additional features where we can remove the humidity to provide clearer subject information by turning on the dehazing mode from low to high, the high dehazing levels. Then looking at the superior environmental adaptability, by having an IP54 uh, ingress protection rating, the payload have the capability to protect from dust and water. And at the same time, this payload have the ability to operate under a cold or hot weather from hot, from temperature of 20 degree uh, to 50 degree Celsius. And uh, another features are the pre-recording where it records from 10 seconds, 15 seconds or even 30 seconds time period before the formal recording starts. So this allows us to have more information before the event started. Not only that, the security code function can fully protect your files from any unauthorized user who are trying to open or obtain your files without knowing from you. <clears throat> okay. And lastly, the HTT series able to utilize the Flight Hub 2. Some of you might aware of Flight Hub 2. So it is a cloud platform, which trying to synchronize with the rest of the team and provide a live stream from any devices. So since we have covered their specification and its features, so let's proceed to the product comparison where we will we'll be comparing different drone of DJI Enterprise models and also its predecessor, the, the, the payload, the H20. So here are the list of information to execute the comparison. When comparing each of them, we will make sure that all the parameters and the subject to focus are the same. The equipment we are focusing on are the H30 payload, H20 payload, Matrix 30 drone, and Mavic 3E drone. Now let us discover it together. Okay, so uh, referring to the drone comparison, we are using a spot capture and a person as a subject on a night time with 10 times zoom, all three of them. So we can conclude that HTT 
from the image, the H30 provide greater image clarity compared to Mavic 3E and Matrix 30. Next, uh, we'll be focusing on the vehicle as a subject with 160 times zoom. So both Matrix 30 and H30 have the capability to zoom up to 160 times, while Mavic 3E only reaches up to its maximum zoom capability, which is 56 times only. So to conclude, H30 still able to provide much clearer image towards the subject at a long distance compared to Mavic 3E and Matrix 30. And then each of the drone provide a different maximum zoom capability. Mavic 3E can reach up to 56 times zoom, while Matrix 30 can reach up to 200 times zoom. And H30 can reach up to 400 times zoom. So to conclude, when comparing this towards the subject, H30 able to provide very clear image while uh, zooming in to its maximum capability at 400 times compared to Mavic 3E and Matrix 30. Now let's compare the H30 and its predecessor, the H20. So since H20 only provide up to 200 times zoom capability, we will then be using H30 on uh, 200 times zoom to compare. So to conclude, the H30 provide more clarity on the subject rather than the H20 at 200 times zoom. And yet, H30 still able to extend its zoom capability up to 400 times and still provide better clarity. Now, on the daytime drone comparison, our subject this time will be the highway toll spotlight. So, to conclude, once again, Mavic 3E and Matrix 30 could not keep up with the maximum zoom capability of H30. And at the same time, H30 still provide greater uh, image clarity on the subject. Moving on, we then compare the payloads of its predecessor and the latest one, which is the H30. So comparing with the new and old payload on the daytime, so we can conclude that uh, H30 provides higher subject clarity rather than H20 on both 200 times zoom. And same again, yet uh, H30 is still able to extend its zoom capability up to 400 times and still provide better uh, clarity. So here is an additional uh, comparison. We also compare the accuracy of laser range finder on the same subject, which is the toll spotlight, and using the matrix 30, H20 payload, and H30 payload. So both M30 and H30 measurement are almost close to each other. However, H30 measurement are about 200 times or 200 meters different with the matrix 30 and H30. So to understand more, uh, the actual location and measurement are the green line from the map as shown in the slide. So uh, the H20 did not touches the actual subject, but instead it went through the subject and touches behind it. So then we can conclude that H20 have some difficulties of detecting a small subject while Matrix 30 and H30 able to utilize this. Uh, however, H30 still provide better uh, subject clarity compared to the Matrix 30. So overall, the conclusion is H30 overcome all the capability that H20 have in terms of maximum, in terms of additional maximum zoom. Uh, image uh, quality 
and features such as uh, longer measure measurement range of laser range finder. Uh, H30 also enables extra features that H20 does not provide, which are the dehazing mode and night mode. <coughs> Now, uh, our last agenda will be covering the application scenarios. When does the Zenmuse HTT are suitable to be used at? Zenmuse HTT can uh, apply through many industries, uh, such as public safety, energy inspection, water and forestry, and also emergency and uh, firefighting. So for a quick emergency response on fire, it can provide a thermal data and a real-time monitoring. So here are some of the background that happens in April 2024, there was a fire. So we can use or even utilize the thermal sensor from HTT to provide more information on the case event happened. Okay. And when trying to focus on the power line, HTT series, especially the HTT, are suitable to do a power line inspection by providing both nighttime vision and also the thermal sensor information. And then lastly, uh, the HTT series also suitable for wildlife monitoring, where we can observe the wildlife from far distance without disturbing them. So uh, that is all for me. Thank you for listening. I will then pass to Mrs. Aisha and the GIS lead to focus more and share with you all on our local case study. Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar this morning. So, um, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, this morning, um, I will present be presenting on the local case study that we have done in Marang Terengganu on the solar and also the UAV thermal application. So, so here are uh, we start from the introduction first. So across the globe, there is a transition uh, towards the renewable sources such as solar, wind, and also the hydroelectric power. So um, the solar power is a key component uh, of the sustainable energy. It stands out for its abundant availability, cost effectiveness, and also it can minimize the environmental impact. And uh, here in this tropical region, uh, our government and also the private sectors worldwide are uh, currently investing on the solar infrastructure and also under the research and the development. So since we have done this case study in the tropical climate, we want to find out on the solar uh, panels itself, we want to investigate um, that what, uh, what are the uh, solar PV system defects uh, that uh, can occur in the solar farm uh, in the uh, northern part of um, north, north uh, east of part of uh, Malaysia, which is in Terengganu. So um, the challenges of the tropical climate can uh, affect on many parts uh, the solar PV. So the solar PV itself, the photovoltaic means the panels, is very, very sensitive to the high temperature. And also the humidity levels are in, uh, in this tropical climate region can also cause the corrosion of the metal parts here. And also the weather tropical is um, having a frequent tropical storm and also the heavy rainfall can also affect the solar PV performance. So it is, is important to understand the solar PV defects in order to maintain the performance uh, from time to time and also to ensure the consistency energy that uh, have been supplied to the locals and also uh, to produce uh, the early detection 
uh, and also to prevent the um, preventive uh, maintenance. And also we have the technological advancement to enhance this accuracy. So let's start with the common faulty types in the solar PV systems. So we have five here commons that um, uh, can possibly uh, occur in the tropical climate here. So the first one is the overheating uh, component. So understanding this fault is very, very important to optimal performance and reliability of the solar installation. So let's go to the first one, the overheating component. What is the excessive, uh, very, very excessive heat in the PV component that can decrease the energy uh, prod production and cause the early system breakdown? The second PV defects will be the bypass diode. This will be the supply for the electricity uh, to the panels. And then uh, when these uh, defects occur, okay, so it can cause the localized uh, high temperature and interrupt the electric current flow to the PV uh, system itself. So the third uh, common one is the hotspot. So what is a hotspot? It's a spot that uh, contain the hotter section of the PV modules due to cell mismatch or um, soiling or shade that can happen on top on the solar PV. So um, the fourth one is the in, uh, inadequate interconnection, means that in between the interconnection on the panels itself, um, the fault connection between this one can impede the electric uh, conductivity and system reliability on top of the panel. So uh, the fifth one, the common one is the CTA. We call it cluster of thermal anomalies. It can happen, all these four common um, uh, defects can be happen into the panels, uh, into one panel. It means you have the uh, bypass diode in one place and you have the hotspot, uh, for example, in one place. So we call it cluster of thermal anomalies, it means cluster of the defects in, in one. So the study case that we have done uh, in Marang Terengganu, so the objective here is to assess the, uh, the defects using the thermal uh, UAV. So um, yeah, we want to know um, in the tropical region with the high temperature and humidity, so how it can affect. So we use this uh, thermal sensor um, for the inspection. So the, the data collection comprised of 29 zone flight on the upper, uh, lower and the middle uh, parts of uh, the solar farm. So uh, we also prepared a flight plan to uh, co comprehensive uh, to cover the solar farm area. So we have the flight plan for optimal uh, collection. So these are our methods. OK, so first we will start on the study area itself, the case area itself. So uh, we will then um, use our equipment, utilize, check our equipment before we do the mission uh, uh, the, on the case study in Marang. So we also plan on the, do the flight plan uh, before the um, flying, before the acquisition. So, and then the fourth one, uh, we will then uh, do the data collection itself. And then we will do the inspection and also the irradiance of the collection. So before we do the mission, we must make sure there are certain levels of irradiance uh, values so that uh, the thermal uh, inspection can be uh, you know, can be monitored in uh, within the specific uh, specific temperature and weather. So the after we done the inspection, after we done the mission. So there we will analyze the data. We will uh, also uh, do some correlation and so the analysis. And then we will also do, uh, we have done the visual analysis of each of the thermal images. All right, so the last one, we identify the categories of defects and also we analyze the temporal variation um, that can affect on the uh, solar panels if, uh, itself. So then we will um, know on the conclusion side on so the recommendation. So here's are the result. The first thing first, we must um, make sure that the location are well uh, precise and also in a great position. Um, that's why we are using the RTK mode uh, for the uh, for the uh, equipment. So we must make sure that it the boundary are aligned with the. Um, 
location uh, solar farm itself. So that um, after that we can then we can identify all the defects in each of the solar panels. So these are the report on the irradiance data versus time. Do we have done this on the three days uh, acquisition itself? So for the irradiance part, okay, it is very important to know on the weather and also the irradiance levels. So we are very, very lucky that we can um, do um, this one in three days straight. So the day one, um, yeah, we start with the 700 watt per meter squared and also um, during the um, evening uh, time, uh, it decreased, uh, it started to decrease. So the, the um, well, we can see for these three days, um, the peak irradiance uh, that uh, spike is uh, occurs at noon. So yeah, it depends on the weather and also the uh, irradiance level itself. So once we got the data, we will analyze the data. So the total panels is um, 216,000, okay, over the solar farm that uh, we have done. So we, among of this, um, we uh, identify uh, that all these five types, uh, five common types occur in the solar in Maram. So the first um, one, uh, is bypass diode. The most uh, major problem that occurs in that uh, farm is uh, yeah, it caused by bypass diode. So uh, around 75% uh, of the defects are caused by bypass diode. So the second um, defect is from uh, the hotspot. So yeah, these um, two, uh, we can say that it's a major defect. So that is, uh, we have to do the report and also um, have to like um, uh, send the report to the um, office, go to the solar farm so that they can take action on the repairing on the solar panels itself. So, and then it, uh, the cluster thermal anomalies also, it, it is uh, like 13% of the defects and then uh, followed by faulty in interconnection uh, and also uh, 0.4% only occurs for the overheating component. So for this um, uh, solar farm that we have done, um, yeah, uh, around 98% uh, still healthy and also two, only 2% 2 actually uh, is not healthy for the solar panels. So um, yeah, we have come to the conclusion on the solar uh, solar inspection. So we have explored how this UAV technology have um, revolution on our approach to solar PV compared to the field uh, works itself. So by applying this uh, RTK GPS tools and also the thermal imaging, uh, we have achieved um, the comprehensive assessment of the five uh, defects of the thermographic uh, flaws in the record time. It can save costs and also the labor. And um, yes, uh, for the future direction, we can advocate to continue this research, research and innovation as a uh, maintenance uh, purpose for the monitoring activities in solar farm. Uh, so yes, I finished uh, my case study presentation. So now we shall move to the Q&A session. Yes, Shafiq. Right, thank you, everyone. So for those of you who uh, have uh, some question, feel free to post them in the chat box. So that's looking at the some of the questions that has been uh, asked in the chat box. Do HTT series have human or any subject detection like counting or face recognition? Unfortunately, uh, HTT series does not have that capability yet. Okay, and then uh, uh, what is the improvement from H20 and HTT, H20T and HTTT? So referring to the laser range finder, uh, that's one of the improvement. So longer measurement range and also the thermal sensor. Uh, 
uh, it provides a more or higher resolution by using a HTTT rather than H20T. And then uh, regarding to local case study, what is the recommended irradiance value or time to do solar mapping? How can we pinpoint the root of the cause of the panel issue with the thermal image? So, and so I will take over this question. Eh? Uh, so the the recommend irradiance value that um, uh, suitable to do the solar mapping is a minimum of six hundred watt per meter square. So uh, once we have reached this six hundred value, then we can do the acquisition for the solar mapping purposes. So if we have the lower six uh, from the six hundred then it's not uh, recommend to do this uh, solar thermal. This is based on the study that have been conducted in the tropical regions too. Uh, and then the other one is the uh, the question from uh, one. So what's the ideal height between the drone and the solar panel during the inspection? So in this mission, in this case study, we have three uh, height. Uh, optional uh, height. So the first one is the 33 meter of altitude of the drone flying, and the second one is 62 meters of altitude of the drone flying, um, and then the other one is uh, 80 meter of uh, drone flying uh, on top of the solar panel. So we choose the second one, 62 meter uh, altitude with uh, 10 meter per second of the speed of the drone because we find it sufficient enough to produce um, our, for our case study it means we um, can produce the defects, we can identify the defects uh, within that uh, level of uh, altitude, flying altitude drones. Okay. Okay, so the next question, uh, H30 series compatible for triple gimbal configuration? Uh, yes, so uh, you can attach with third party payload. Uh, along with uh, another uh, third-party payload to attach together by three maximum gimbal configuration. And what is the maximum distance, HTT distance plate number recognition? So the maximum distance plate number recognition, in terms of uh, recognition, uh, I would say the there is no uh, recognition for HTT, but in terms of the clarity or the uh, quality of the image when you are trying to zoom, it all depends uh, on how how and where you use. So if the area got some obstruction or even let's say uh, a lot of haze, so the quality when you try to zoom in from afar will be uh, much lesser. Okay, and then is there any uh, lens protection from dust or dirt during the flight? <clears throat> So since it is uh, IP54 rating, so uh, it already provide us the uh, protection from dust during the flight. And when talking about the picture blur, uh, it all depends on how you take care of the lens. So if you want a lens protection, maybe there is an accessory we can uh, uh, I will let my team know that if there is any any accessory for protecting the lens, okay. <clears throat> and then from Kelvin Chu, uh, in the application of solar panel inspection, what sort of productivity per drone by hectare based on the case study? How long the available period time for the in inspection with adequate irradiance level? So, Aisha. So, yeah, um, that's very interesting questions. Uh, okay, based on the case study. So for this uh, case study we have done is uh, 270 hectares uh, of area. So we have done this in within uh, three days with the selected of altitude and the speed that we choose uh, for the inspection with adequate irradiance level. So before we do this uh, acquisition, we also check on the forecast and uh, also the um, the, the date uh, with the uh, weather uh, and the temperature of the date that we choose. So with the adequate irradiance level, so we managed to do this 
in within uh, three days for 270 hectares. I hope that this will answer your question. Thank you. Okay, okay next uh, from Safwan uh, from Pinovero. Okay. What is the flight speed during those uh, mapping mission? Mapping mission, okay. So in terms of mapping mission, uh, the payload of H30 have the wide camera to do a mapping, but uh, we will not suggest to use the H30 since there are uh, other payloads that have the capability or more focus on the uh, mapping mission. So. Uh, let's talk about the flight mission. So, a uh, flight speed. So, the flight speed, uh, our recommendation would be 10 meter per second for RGB. So, uh, for LiDAR, it is subjective. Uh, LiDAR payload, it is subjective since uh, it all refers to the, uh, the repetitive and non repetitive uh, scanning. Okay. And then for the local key study from Amisha as well, what is the recommended software to use for processing and analysis? OK, let me ask this question. So for the local case study that we have done, especially on the thermal, um, we have done two sites, means once we want to focus on the thermal itself, the other one we want to see the overall view of the solar farm itself. So. Uh, they are, there are lots of software that we use for this case study. One of it is uh, DJI Terra for the overview of the uh, map itself. So uh, we use this because it supports the DJI uh, imageries. And also for the processing and analysis, we use the, um, the uh, DJI thermal analysis to uh, inspect the temperature uh, values for all the panels. And also we use the um, software that can uh, support the thermal uh, processing such as uh, Pix4D, RTSoft. Uh, and then we also use, uh, we also uh, confirm the area by visual, uh, visually inspection onto each of the panels so that we can identify all the defects that occur um, on the panel itself. So uh, from that, we can produce the reporting and also the analysis on the thermal uh, case study. OK. OK, so since uh, there are no more questions available for us to answer, uh, OK, uh, there's one more just came by. Uh, can the HTT series be used on the older model of uh, Matrix 300 or Matrix uh, 210? So the HTT uh, series can be used for the Matrix 300 only, the old model. But unfortunately for M210, uh, we, will, uh, we haven't confirmed yet, but uh, for M210, Matrix uh, 210, uh, we will let you know if uh, the payload are able to uh, attach or compatible with the matrix 210. But as so far, we know that matrix 300 are able to uh, be compatible with H30. But uh, for additional information, when you're trying to use the matrix 300 attached with the H30 payload, uh, you will need to use the uh, RC plus uh, controller. Yep. And then what's the recommended SD card to use for smooth operation? Uh, the brands that we use are Kingston uh, SD card, and then it all depends on the speed of the SD card to be transferred on. So the higher the speed, uh, much better uh, the image or the footage to be transferred into the SD card. OK, so I think uh, we can end the session. So before we end the session, 
If there are no uh, questions, uh, we will then uh, end the Q&A session. So for those of you who have not followed our AUNIX uh, social media, you can follow us uh, through LinkedIn, Facebook, and even YouTube. You can scan the QR code uh, to follow us. We will be posting the latest update on DJI products and industry news. So besides, there will be also lots of in-person events uh, as well as similar, similar webinars like this, which we will be updating regularly. Okay, so uh, can we order the product now? Uh, HTT, HTT product, uh, we will let you know that if we have the stocks available from our uh, our HQ. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to contact us and then uh, just uh, ask for any quotation. And then uh, thank you so much uh, for listening to our webinar. Thank you for your time today. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.